Aby, Philbin, Bowman, Brenda. Yes, uh, Derek, uh, we, we've talked about regrets here a second ago and Ir- Ireland's financial woes are certainly no laughing matter. But in the midst of all the doom and gloom and emigration, two Irish comedians you've <coughs> just mentioned, A.B. Philman Bowman and Aidan Kildan, um, are touring the country in a totally new way and they're hoping to try and combat recession with humour and with optimism, right? Because you go to their show mm-hmm. and instead of buying a ticket... They said, well, look, come if you like it, stay. If you don't, walk out. And if you really like it, we're not asking you to buy a ticket, but here's a brown envelope, very Irish. You can put something in it. Also, we don't have anywhere to stay. We need petrol for the car. Very hungry. So if you'd like to maybe offer us something, one of your services, something that you have that we could benefit. So our entertainment has given you a night out and a laugh. Now you barter and give us something back. So in order to sustain their tour... Yeah. People have to kind of put them up, etc. So and are they fussy about where they stay? Not a bit, no. The side of the road practically do oh the two lads. Gracious me. But um they're great fun. Their show is called Stand Up Against the Banks. And uh, Aidan, one of the performers, is a former banker with the once prestigious, now disgraced Bear Stearns Bank. And in two thousand and seven he just left it and they hassled him for the mortgages, etc. he taken out and he's written a comedy thing about how to kind of overcome <coughs> that. And of course A B, as we know, he's a great character around, great comedian. Um and he he has written his own idea about financial institutions and how how we're all snowed under from them and how we need to free ourselves and have non-violent protests. So there's kind of message in their, in their comedy as well. So anyway, I go to my local coffee shop in Nace, run by this amazing woman called Eileen, even though the restaurant's called Alice's Restaurant. <laughs> and she's one of these real gentle, kind people. And at night, sometimes she might bring the likes of Luca Bloom or somebody. And it's not a money thing, it's just you come and you sit down and you... It, it's different, yeah. It's different, something she does. And she said to me, look, I have this thing going on. And she explained it to me and I said, barter. I said, you're joking me. I said, I'll have to go along to that. So along to it, I went and she took all the tables out. It was all chairs and there was about 50 people there. None of Nobody bought a ticket. Nobody spent a penny. And I talked to AB first and I said, tell us the idea behind this. And what are you actually trying to do with the show? Try and empower people. Aidan's got a background in banking, so he knows how the banks screwed things over. He likes to turn the tables on them. I've got a background. I studied nonviolent resistance and protest. And actually, my master's was on comedy as a weapon of nonviolent protest. Uh, it was called How Many Comedians Does It Take to Change a Government? Uh, <laughs> Can I just ask, did you pass? Uh, yeah, no, I got a first, actually. <laughs> Amazingly, yeah. With a, bizarrely, somehow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, anyway, uh, that's another, <laughs> another day's work. But okay. so, so between the two of us, we've, we've ideas about how people can resist the current situation that we're in. Trying to give them a bit of optimism, a bit of, a bit of hope. And because we know people are in negative equity, people have lost their jobs, it's free entry. If you can pay us, if you can give us some money at the end, uh, that'd be great. If you can't, we're, we accept barter. Someone gave me juggling lessons tonight. In the past, we've offers of people doing posters for us or putting us up for the night. And the real idea is to get this out this message that the more we barter, the more we're resisting the financial system. And the less we use money, uh, the more we help each other out, uh, the less power we're giving to financial institutions to rule our lives. What I'm getting from you is this is not just a show, but this is an actual philosophy that you try and carry out in your daily life. Would that be right? How does it work? Well, I, I try to live a low cost lifestyle. I, I try to think of people talk about a carbon You'd footprint. Be my perfect son. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. My parents might agree, might differ with that. But anyway. <laughs> But no, there's this idea we, we have now of a carbon footprint and you're trying to reduce your carbon footprint. Yeah. I try to reduce my financial footprint as well. So How? I don't spend an awful lot of money. Uh, I don't drink, which is very handy for saving money. Uh, I don't smoke. Um, I tend not to go to the cinema. I tend to watch DVDs because I tend to pick out something that I really want to see and watch it in my own time, usually at three in the morning after writing jokes for two hours. And as much as possible, I try and offer people stuff that I could do low cost and get you know, goods and stuff in exchange. My idea of a really good time is hanging out with a friend, having a cup of coffee and chatting for three or four hours. So it doesn't cost a lot of money. Tell me about this tour. This tour survives on the kindness of strangers, so to speak. Explain it. Well, we thought to make it more interesting, we thought what we'd do is we can only keep the tour going for as long as we have money to pay for petrol or accommodation or food or whatever we need. So all the donations we get at the end go into the tour and we can keep it running. But if people, instead of offering us money, can say, listen, I have a friend who has a pub down the country and they'd love to have you go down to them and they can put us up for the night and give us a venue, we'll go and do the gig, do the gig there. Um, so it keeps going as much as people believe in it. And that, as a performer, that gives you a totally different contract with the audience. Like if people have paid 50 
15 quid, they want to be entertained. They, they, you, they want to hear a certain number of jokes, a certain number of laughs per minute. Yeah. Whereas if you go in and it's free entry, they can walk out any time they want, if they like, if they don't like the show. So you've got to be good, but you've also got a sort of a freedom and a license to go, this is what I think is funny and interesting. If you, if you agree, stick around. If you don't, that's fair enough. The question is, are they good? Will we have a little listen? Have a listen. Here's a little clip of AB in full flight. Just to tell you my own story during the financial crisis. Well, during the Celtic Tiger, uh, essentially I wanted to be a comedian. So I was, you know, travelling around. To, you know, I didn't make a lot of money at comedy. It was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. But, you know, I, was, I couldn't afford to buy a house. Couldn't even rent a house. I was living at home with my parents. Didn't drink, didn't drive, uh, didn't smoke, didn't get married or have kids. I couldn't afford to do any of these things. Not that I necessarily wanted to. Um, and I remember... Then when the financial crisis hit, I remember one day just waking up at around 12 noon, because that's how I roll. <laughs> and I put the radio on. And it was, it was shocking, because, you know, people were, were losing their homes and, and, and facing negative equity and losing their jobs and having to emigrate. It was, it was awful. I was listening to about half an hour. It was really unrelenting bad news. And then I'm looking at myself and thinking, hang on a second. I don't own a house, so I'm not in negative equity. And I don't think anybody can outsource this bullshit to China. <laughs> I realised I had gone to bed a textbook loser and woken up an economic genius. <laughs> so that was recorded before the show. Exactly. And Brenda reliably informs me people were rolling around the aisles laughing. Falling around the Falling place. around. Anyway, we'll find out did people actually agree to barter and give them something after news headlines now with Eileen Dunn. Or so back to our boys who are bartering their talent. Yes, we're back to Alice's restaurant in Nace where A.B. Philman Bowman and Aidan Killen are performing their show Stand Up Against the Banks and people have come along they haven't paid in but what are they going to give them in return at the end of the show? People seem to really enjoy it and in a very Irish way a big brown envelope went around. So I stopped people and I said to them what are you giving? Are you giving a selection of things? And the first person was very unusual. Her name was Rihanna. She wasn't offering herself physically or anything like that but what she was offering them was quite unusual. She's from Offaly, by the way. Here's Rena. I am going to offer him... To, I'm going to offer to teach him how to juggle. To juggle? Yeah. To juggle? To juggle. And that's your thing? That's my thing. Abby, you're being offered how to... I, I can't juggle. I'm really bad at juggling. Are you serious? You're going to teach him how to juggle yes. in return for the show tonight? Yes, exactly. Cool. Can we start now? Can we have a, give it a go? Yeah, okay, right, okay. okay. Start with one. Right, that's amazing. Well, look, work away and I'll see yeah, what other little right. gems people have for Abby, okay? okay? My name is Niall. Well, Niall, did you enjoy that? I did. I had a great time. I thought they were really good and they were really fun. To be brutally honest with you, I tell you, I wasn't really aware of the, the bartering thing until yeah. I came tonight. I thought my wife had a ticket and then when she said, no, it's whatever. But, um, oh, so what do you make of that? It's, it is different. It's interesting. It's different. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, there's a lot of tru truth in it. I mean, you know, I mean, we all have bits that we can offer and I suppose, you know, if we all could do something for each other, I mean, it would cut out a lot of problems that we have. Okay, but, so but it, thinking along those lines, what have you offered the guys to tonight short of washing their car <laughs> no i am um, seriously well i live here nearby but i'm from galway originally and i know a friend of mine has a, a pub down in atherai so i just suggested to abby they're going out that maybe he might be able to, i might be able to get a gig down there you know I'll, I'll give him a shout maybe tomorrow and see and keep the keep it rolling keep the show on the road well i got to the lazy thing and I, I i handed over some money i i donated some money how Mr. much Tuckman. did you give, do you mind me ask? We gave €20 Euro between the two of us. All right, so that wasn't bad. Uh, no, do you think that's a good idea? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Super idea. Good on them, you know, trying something different. Well, I was entertained tonight by two young men in their 30s. Mm. And I have at home two spare bedrooms which were once occupied by two young men in their 30s. Or, or, would these be your children? Yes. Well, grown yes. up children. Grown up so children, so, yeah. So there yeah. Are, their bedrooms are still there. Oh, so you're offering them overnight I'm accommodation. Them accommodation, yeah. So, Amy, we've got your accommodation. Oh, look, That's I'm, not I'm unusual, not sure. is it? As much as possible now, I try to get accommodation when I travel because you end up talking to people and meeting them, getting to know them a bit. And it's a much more human experience actually staying in somebody's, like, you know, flat or spare room or whatever. Eileen, you're happy to have both boys back? Both boys. Mm. Two bedrooms. Well, both men back. Both we men back. Yeah. yeah. Well, sleep well. <laughs> we <laughs> Thank will. you. We will. Well, it sounds like a nice idea. Mind you, do they only get 20 quid? No, a lot more people put money in oh, their envelope, okay. tax-free well, donations, How can people find them? Well, uh, you go onto their website. We have details, of course, on the Mooney Show website, but it's ablaughs.com. Their next gig, I think, is in the Badass Cafe on Thursday, 23rd of February. 
The Banas Cafe? Yes, in, in Dublin. Yes, I thought in it Dublin. closed down. Is it open again? Well, it must be open again because oh, that's good. what they told Delighted me. Delighted to hear it. And what I would say is remember, if you don't pay for their petrol accommodation, the gig, the tour ends. So it's up to people if they like it or not. Go out and support them.